Alright, so today is the uh, Suguruku Tournament, the Car Shop Tournament. Let's go ahead and just go into that right now. The tournament's much more than I expected, or rather the turnout. Let's get the Suguruku's Tournament on the way. Begin! First round. I'm going to go ahead and take on Tristan. Sweet, I get a rematch by the time you beat me unceremoniously. Oh yeah, I can show you that I can duel him. Right, so let's go ahead and see if we can take down Tristan Taylor here. Uh, I'm going to go second. Unfortunately, uh, as I mentioned a couple of episodes back, maybe an episode back. Um, oh no, are these going to be match duels? Oh, crap. Um, this game has a uh, constantly changing ban list. So, so far, um, I've had to remove both Dark Hole and Ring of Destruction from my deck. Because unfortunately... Uh, I, um, can't use them in, uh, this week. Uh, that's fine. Gets rid of his monster. Uh, monster reborn his bands. We can't bring that back. Uh, so that works out. I could throw out... I'll play, actually, a monster in defense mode. And throw down a face down. Uh, I could have thrown out Goblin's attack force and gone straight for the attack, but I'll see if he doesn't have anything this turn. Uh, perfect. So then I have a little bit of protection with your boy... Uh, Man-Eater bug there, but I actually use La Jin, the mystical genie this turn, actually. And, uh, see if I can put some direct damage here. Oh, it's gonna activate Skull Dice. It's gonna decrease my life points. Times a roll. Uh, it's roll times 100. It means 300, but don't only for this turn, so that's fine. Uh, and if he d actually gets a monster this turn, uh, oh boy, he's actually gonna give it Horn of the Unicorn. And sort of the deep seated. Man, he's gonna be upset when he finds out what I have face down. Because uh, both of those cards, once they're destroyed, they go to the top of your deck. So he's gonna go ahead and just lock himself into not being able to draw any cards anytime soon. Uh, so I'll flip over my Man Eater Bug. And then I'll obviously target not my own monster, but his Taints of Wisdom. Uh, and sort of deep seated back of his deck. Corner <laughs> of the Unicorn back to the top of his deck. So both of his monsters, or rather both of his cards, now just go to the top of his deck and can't do a damn thing about it. Unless he's been holding out a monster in his hand this entire time, he's not going to be able to do anything for at least uh, two turns. Uh, and then I can just go straight and finish him off. Next turn I'll just summon Wind Wing Weaver, my, uh, I guess, trump card. I did manage to get a Blue-Eyes White Dragon from the starter deck. Uh, the Kaiba starter deck, but I figured I'd, I'll just use Wing Weaver. Anyway, when he gets a monster, I'll just use Change of Heart, which is the card I had to replace. Um, actually, hmm. oh, well, yeah, it, it'll automatically be more damage just because I can't put Goblin Attack Force in attack mode. I was going to say I could probably do more damage if I just leave my monsters out in attack, but no, Goblin Attack Force has to go ahead and be quite shit. That's fine. Because uh, I still have another free turn after this. My opponent's not going to be able to do anything. Uh, I'm surprised that cards like that haven't become a lot more popular. Cards that, um, not that they go on top of your deck and fuck you up, but that your opponent lets you basically put cards on top of your deck. Uh, basically the kind of style where, like, you lock out your opponent by giving them really shitty cards on top of their deck. So that way they actually can't really do anything. Uh, I'm quite shocked that that kind of dual strategy hasn't really been a lot more popular. I feel like there are some, you know, some decks or some sets of cards that actually make use of that, but I don't think they're as widely used as they probably can be. Um, let's go ahead and take him on again in the next round. Round two. Uh, hopefully he doesn't get a better hand this time around. <laughs> and his hand he continues to be quite shit. Okay, so it's probably Magic Jammer again, so I'll just go ahead and I'll activate uh, Poisons of the Old Man again, so that it'll actually see if I can... Nope, he actually doesn't have Magic Jammer, right? so that's good to know. Uh, I'll actually play this face down and I'll just end my turn. Bait him to summon another monster, so that I can then special summon the Fiend Mega Cyber. Perfect! Perfect! I might actually even just let him attack me. Just because, uh, 
Now Goblin Attack Force is going to go into defense mode, and he actually, Goblin Attack Force actually has more attack points than the Fiend Mega Cyber, so that would be really bad if I was just left everything out there. Alright, so that's good. I don't really think he really has anything to combat. Um, like, what I mean is, I don't think he has anything that will stop me from attacking him right now, so we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, I'll go ahead and just summon Neo, the Magic Swordsman! Oh, he has, does have a trap hole. There is that. So I could uh, attack his goblin attack force and get it off the field, but I'll actually just go for his faith bird. Because his goblin. Oh no! Skull dice! Even if he gets a. Oh shit, he got a six. Just barely managed to pull through and get rid of that monster. Uh, even if he. Um, you know, manages to get like. Corner of the Unicorn and sort of the deep suited this turn, he can equip to his monster, but it's not going to matter. I mean, it'll matter a little bit because his. Um, Hard, um, what is it called? Uh, Horn of the Unicorn, actually, I think it gives you 700 defense also. Uh, and then I think sort of the deep seed might even give you attack, uh, sorry, it gives you attack and defense as well. Uh, as long as this guy remains on the field, monsters on your points on the field cannot change their battle position. So that boy is gonna have to stay there in defense mode. Uh, but actually, that's not worth it. Let's go ahead and just clean up clock here. Uh, I want to try my best to finish this as quickly as possible because I want to try and see if I can, at the very least, uh, get started on the next duel for this next time. Uh, sorry. Whew, that made no sense. Get started for the next duel of this set of uh, tournaments uh, as soon as possible. Uh, but I, I might end up having to, like, I don't know. I don't want to have too long of an episode. Uh, cause I feel like, like, when I say, re when I'm gonna talk about retention time right now, I don't mean it in the sense of, like, me making that big YouTube money. Uh, <laughs> I just generally mean it in the sense of, like, whether or not my audience gives a shit about what they're watching. I feel like a Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, a Yu-Gi-Oh! I, I, I keep, I wanna say Yu-Gi-Oh! episode, but that's probably not the right term. But basically, as a Yu-Gi-Oh! series that I upload. Uh... They perform, they perform relatively well due to the nostalgia and a lot of people maybe haven't played this game and Yu-Gi-Oh! still being kind of prevalent, especially now with Duel Links and stuff. But if it's hella long, uh, especially since I'm not doing any crazy things, like, you know, <laughs> uh, any relevant cards that are relevant to today's metagame, uh, it can probably drag on. So I try to keep them relatively within regular uh, Let's Play lengths. Uh, so anyways, he's gonna get beat. Arg! I guess I'm not ready yet. I gotta train more if I wanna win. But I hate training. That was an impressive win. No time to rest here. Come over. Oh, but no time to rest. Here comes your uh, your opponent from the second round. I apparently have Tourette's or the stutters or something. Oh, hello. You should feel lucky to see me. It's not often that I enter small tournaments like this. I'm usually after the big prizes. <laughs> Interesting. Brings up a good point that I actually been wanting to talk about. Uh, so I saw this episode. Uh, should I call it an episode? I should say a video. That's probably more accurate. I saw a video by uh, Mother's Basement. He's an anime YouTuber, I guess is the term. He talks about anime on YouTube. <laughs> uh, he talked about card games, and he basically talked about the issues that um, card games have, or card game animes have. Uh, I'll try and... I always... I want to talk about more about other people's videos, uh, but I don't want to like not give them credit, so I try not to because I always forget. But I will try at the end of this episode to just type down on a notepad, put it in the same folder as this capture so I know to include in the description a link to this video. But uh, he basically talked about how all these card game animes, their main issue is that they go, they basically go a little too extra uh, when it comes to card games and they just dive into the realm of unrealisticness. Uh, when they could have just focused on the actual aspects of card games that people... Why can't I ever activate cards when I want to? <laughs> the timing in this game is really weird. Um, yeah, they, like, they focus on the really weird... Uh, no, sorry, not really weird. The really uh, unrealistic aspects of card games. So they'll focus on, you know, saving the world and summoning crazy monsters and uh, the Shadow Realm and all that extra stuff. Uh, but... His argument is that they would be a lot more interested if they focused on the, playing the actual game, developing over time, uh, 
coming up with good strategies, good combos, going to actual tournaments, uh, opening packs, getting good cards, that kind of stuff. Stuff that actual people go through uh, and that we can actually relate to. Can't actually. Uh, this game is kind of weird because you can actually change the timing on cards. So I can go over here and actually change the timing for this card. See here, it just doesn't activate ever. <laughs> so I can change it. Uh, but I don't know. I haven't seemed to notice if it um, carries over to another duel. Uh, well, I guess I'll put it. I would like it when it's only my opponent that clears an attack, but fine, I'll do it that way. Because, uh, you know, they've kind of learned their lessons from previous games where it was pretty annoying, uh, you know, constantly being like, oh, you want to activate Mystical Space Typhoon? You want to activate Mystical Space Typhoon? You want to activate Mystical Space Typhoon? Oh boy, that sucks. But yeah. As I was uh, saying, uh, he was talking a lot about that, and then he brought up uh, Card Fight Vanguard. Uh, the first series, uh, which is a series that I really wanted to talk about. I really, really, for a very long time, wanted to do some sort of uh, comparison piece between Cardfight Vanguard and the Yu Gi Oh franchise, just because it's sort of like it starts out at the very least at sort of this like anti meta, or maybe not anti meta. What's the word that these guys like to use all the time? Uh, this construction, this course, I don't know, I, I'm not sure which one is the right word, but. Uh, this construction, I think, is the right one. Uh, a disconstruction of the uh, card game sort of series, or uh, not series, but genre. Uh, so they try to sort of do things a lot more differently, and you know, similarly how uh, Moses Dayson was talking about how they try to um, be more, they how they should focus, I should say, uh, on being a lot more down to earth and more realistic, and what actual people that get these card games actually do uh, they start out like that uh, which is why I was so intrigued at first when I saw card fight Vanguard so I can if anything vouch for his argument that that is a lot more interesting uh, so I can actually return this to the hand because that's gonna be a lot harder for her to summon again uh, and then I'll get rid of I guess this faith bird here um, but yeah I've been uh, wanting to just make a video just because I my the point of my video wouldn't have been uh, his argument, but it would have been how this series does sort of uh, work as I'm going to say like a deep construction or discourse of the card game genre, but also at the same time how it tries a lot of things but fails in my opinion. Uh, it could have probably been a lot better. Oh man, I'm getting destroyed over here. Um, I think yeah, that's probably her strongest card. for it, I think yeah. Oh, she's got seven tools with Bennett. Well, I'm gonna end up losing this. Great. I'm gonna have to probably end up picking this up next time with me having to go back in time. Oh no. I'm left off with 100 LP. But yeah, I've been wanting to really do that video. Uh, I don't know if I'll actually do it just because I would have to A, rewatch Cardfight Vanguard and probably some more Yu Gi Oh! just so I have solid. I feel confident in my arguments and. I also don't really make those kinds of videos, so I didn't really want to have to go through all of that. Uh, so I'll actually just play this in attack mode. And then I'll actually just play Gravity Axe to power him up just a bit. Uh, he's actually, she's actually going to activate Magic Jammer, which is fine. So at least I know she activated Magic Jammer. She has no more cards in her hand. She discarded her Harpies Ladies. But I won't attack, obviously. Because if I attack, he'll go in defense mode and he'll get destroyed. Rising Air Current, uh, that doesn't give her enough attack points to get over me. So I buy myself for one more turn. Draw! Oh my god, Wind Weaver. That's not good. I just have to end my turn. I'm gonna have to activate the Bang Shot. I'm kind of scared if she uses you know, Magic Stop. Mystical Space Type or anything like that to destroy. Oh boy, Jiragumo. Jiragumo's a Earth Monster, yeah. Alright, so I can summon Jiragumo. Uh, and then I can use Big Bang Shot to protect Jiragumo because she can summon, for example, Harpy's brother. And Harpy's brother would have more attack than Jiragumo, which would suck. Uh, so the thing with Jiragumo is that when he attacks, I have to flip a coin. And if I call it right, my monsters, uh, uh rather, my life points get cut in. Uh, if I call it wrong, my life points get cut in half. But I have 100 life points, so it really doesn't matter <laughs> right now whether or not that happens or not. 
Because my get, because there's no way that she's only going to deal 50 points of damage to me and I'll still survive. Oh shit! Thank God I had another monster. Ah oh, damn it! That's what I was afraid of. But she, I guess she got Harpy's pet dragon. Ooh, yes. Change of heart. Oh man, clutch. Take her monster here, which is gonna actually be Harpy's pet dragon. Yeah, that's what I figured. Ah, uh, he has more attack than fucking this guy. She could have easily won. I don't know why she did that. Uh, but anyways, I'll just go ahead and tribute my uh, Goblin Attack Force and her Harpy's Pet Dragon to summon Buster Blader, who gets boosted up by the fact that she has a Harpy's Pet Dragon. I have no idea why she decided to do that. That made no sense to me. Why she played, why she tributed for Harpy's Pet Dragon, who gets boosted by this thing's effect, but then to play it in defense mode. I guess the AI kind of saw the base value of the card and didn't calculate how much um, attack the card would gain because of rising air current. So I played in defense mode because it saw the 2,000 points and I was like, ah oh, shit, this is weaker. Not knowing if it played it face up, it would she would have won. So that was clutch as all hell. I managed to bring that back with 100 LP. I could not get any more clutch than that. <laughs> uh, but with that, uh, we'll actually live this episode on a cliffhanger, and I'll take on the second match, uh, rather the second duel in this match against my next time. Stay fresh.